Alright guys, Google Style Aligned is here and we can now copy image styles using only one reference image. And the best part? We will be installing it locally with one click. Now if you don't know about Google Style Aligned is let me run you through it real quick. Style Aligned performs consistent style generation with a pre-trained diffusion model without fine-tuning. In simple words, Style Aligned by Google is like a smart artist that can mimic any art style you want, right off the bat, without needing extra practice, and using only one image as a reference. So what does that mean for us? Well, let's say you see a specific art style that you like and you want to create an image just like it a variation of that image but keeping the same art style that is what Google style align does this is great because now you can get consistency throughout your images every single time so if you're creating a book and you want to showcase different scenes but keep the specific style consistent this is perfect especially due to the fact that you only need one image as a reference the possibilities are endless so with that being said let's fire up Pinocchio and install style align by Google if you don't have Pinocchio yet pause this video and download it at pinocchio.computer perfect now that we have pinocchio installed and launched simply click on the discover button here you'll see style aligned if you don't you'll need to search for it here click on download then install once it's done style aligned will automatically launch in a web browser like this from here i'll change it to dark mode nice now let's go over the user interface this is where you'll drop your reference image or the image you want to copy the style of. Here is where we will describe the reference style. The reference style refers to the unique visual characteristics of the image you're trying to emulate or copy. For example, this image we can use a futuristic and sci-fi reference style. Next, we got described the reference image. This is where you'll describe what's in the image you want to copy. In this case, I'll simply put cyborg. Now for the prompts. If you wanted to generate two images, each new line represents a prompt. For this as example, let's say I wanted to style align this image and output a cat and a dog using this style. My prompt would look like this. Cat. Dog. Each new line with a prompt represents a new image. Next, we have shared score shift. This is related to how strongly the shared style influences the generated image, with a default value of 1.1 possibly indicating a slight emphasis on the reference style over other aspects of image generation. Here we have shared score scale. Think of shared score scale like a control knob for a game that lets you decide how much your new character will look like a cool character you saw. If you turn the knob down, your character will be a bit different, but still have the same awesome vibe. If you leave it as it is, your character will look a lot like the one you're copying. It's a way to mix things up while keeping the style you like. Up next is the guidance scale. The guidance scale is a parameter that controls how much the image generation process follows the text prompt. The higher the value, the more the image sticks to a given text input. Here we have number inference steps, which by default is set to 50. This is the sampling steps, which is the number of iterations that the diffusion model runs to go from a random noise to a recognizable image based on the text prompt. Think of it like sketching a picture. Each step is like adding more details or fixing parts of the sketch. More steps mean a more detailed and better looking picture, but it takes more time. Next up we can check this box if we want the output image to be in a large 1024 by 1024 resolution. By default, without this box selected, the images will be at a 512 by 512 resolution. For me, checking this box made a major difference in time. For some reason, generating a larger image took my PC a very long time. Unless you have a good GPU, I'd recommend sticking to 512 by 512 then upscaling the image later using an external source. And last but not least we have the seed. A seed is like a starting point for creating an image. It's a number that tells the AI how to begin generating the picture. If you use the same seed again, you'll get the same image. It's like a secret code that can recreate the same cool picture every time you use it. This is handy if you find a style or look you really like and want to make similar images. Now that we went over all the settings, let's showcase what style align can actually do. Okay. So here are the results. Here is the cat image and the dog image. As you can see, we simply used this cyborg image as the reference and used the prompt cat and on the second line dog and it generated these two images. Which isn't bad. This cyborg image was created with Dolly 3 and it came out pretty good. So, let me generate another image in Dolly 3 and use that as a reference image. This time, I'll ask Dolly 3 to create an image of a tiger. Close up shot. Highly detailed. Nice. So next, I'll ask it to describe the reference style of this image. There we go. This is a photorealistic style, so that's what I'll use in Style Aligned. So let's go back to Style Aligned and add in this image of the tiger we got from Doll 3. Then for the reference style, I'll use photorealistic style and in the described reference image, I'll put tiger. For the prompt, let's see what it will look like as a bear and a shark. This will be interesting. Here are the results. Here is the reference image of the tiger. This is the bear output and here is the, um, well, it's supposed to be a shark, but who knows? Maybe this is a shark from the planet Snickersphere. So it sort of got the bear and definitely did not get the shark. Next, since it did not get the shark, I'll remove that from the prompt and I'll bump the steps up to get a better quality bear. I don't want to increase it too high, so I'll try it with 75 steps. 
Let's see what happens. Okay, so here are the results. Increasing the steps to 75 did help a bit. I am going to double this and go with 150 steps. Let's see what 150 steps does. Here are the results with 150 steps. It definitely helped and we got more quality out of it. However, I am not sure exactly how high we can go with the steps. I think I'll cap myself out at 150 steps personally, at least with my current setup. Alright, I could go on and on with the testing but truthfully, in my honest opinion, the styles were decent, however, trying to replicate a Dolly 3 image just wasn't happening. I can definitely see, using the branches off of the reference images staying coherent but copying the exact style, maybe my prompting could have been better but if you look at the cat and dog image of the cyborg, it's similar but not exact so if for example, I took this cat and dog image and wanted to use it in let's say a book, I'd probably have to generate another cyborg to match this cat and dog image rather than using the original cyborg image. However, I previously showcased Google Style Align. Now, I want to test this exact cyborg image from Dolly 3 with Stable Diffusion using the ControlNet IP adapter to compare the results. So let me fire up Stable Diffusion and load this cyborg image into Stable Diffusion. I'll be using the model Epic Photogasm model and leaving my settings as default. I'll then enable ControlNet and select IP adapter and drag and drop this cyborg image in. For the positive prompt, I'll use Cat. Here are the results and for me, I think this held the style way better. Although it's not quite a cat like Style Align did, it did keep the style closer to the original image. So one last test, I am going to use dog as the positive prompt and see what we get. Okay that is definitely not a dog or dog cyborg, maybe I just got lucky with the cat prompt. Either way, these tools are free so why not just test them out. After all, your results will differ from mine, and you can do more testing than I did. I just wanted to showcase Google's style aligned AI tool that I've personally been waiting for, for a while now. And to be honest, I personally feel it was overhyped, but then again, that's just me. And I didn't test this through the mud. I ran basic test. Let's keep our creative gears turning. Stay curious and keep experimenting. Remember, in the realm of AI and art, we're just beginning to uncover the wonders. I can't wait to see what incredible new AI tools are next for us. Till next time, this is AI Controversy signing off.